with Talisman's Challenge set to transport a historic engine and trailer weighing 50 tons along 50 miles of winding roads around the Lake District. All are ready to hit the road. Today, Alex Sharphouse is showing Guy Martin why Talisman is the pinnacle of British engineering. What hard work has gone on scene into completing the build and why it's now ready to steam ahead. Probably one of the, the um, worst bits about the thing is there's that much of the intricate stuff on it that you can't actually see. But do you remember when you come one time we were doing all like the diff and all that thing, yeah. you come up with all the gears? Yeah. They're all around this side. Well, have, have go on, a, go on. Excuse a, my back. Excuse have my a bit back. of a. It's all hidden in here now. Like you've got like up in the back of all the gear casings in there, all those fabulous... That's too nice to be putting covers on I know, really, it is it? really. We, when we first Keeping come out, we never had that, that what they call first gear cover on it, because I hadn't got it finished, but um, they, they are only just splash guards, so it all works without it, but all that amazing diff and Oldham coupling and in there, thousands of hours of work, all hidden away behind, just most people think just a, a tin cover really, but... Madness. Uh, but yeah. Madness. How many hours in, in it do you think? Could you, have you had a thing? No, I've never worked it out really. I mean, thousands just, just and thousands. From, it was six, like six years of being relatively sort of active on it really, trying to keep keep going, but. Um, Sound job. Let's go on, but yeah. what's, what's the crap with these, with the brake well, job then? The, the brakes on it, they're just, they're a wooden block. It's a wooden block and a steel band in the in the wheel rim. Go on. Now, this is obviously going to be a little bit of a critical part to what we're doing this weekend, because we're going to need a fair bit of brakes to hold back 50 ton. So, Oh, it's so be... that's what you would do going down a hill. Yeah, yeah, wind the brakes on these. Yeah, that, that's. Oh, you wouldn't snap. You know, you, the engine. You can use the engine to brake, so you pull it back on your basically on your valve gear and you reverse it, and you can start to make the engine hold it back. Could that cause damage? No. Right. No, because all you're doing is altering the valve timing. It's like a similar to a jake brake on a lorry. Yeah. You just alter yeah, the valve yeah. timing. So instead of it taking steam into the pistons, it starts to work the opposite, like a compressor. Yes. So it's, it starts compressing back. That you don't think that'd hold it back enough? Depends in a low gear, yes, but if you're in a higher gear and you've got momentum, More leverage that's, over the... that's the worrying part. So if it they'll, they'll, they'll away. drive up a hill and they'll, they've got so much torque at, at, down to the zero RPM, they'll keep chuffing away and you'll get there. But if you go over brow of a hill and you're in a higher gear and you start to spin them over, they'll overcome themselves and then you won't. So then you're down to brakes and trailer brakes. Um, with We've done the trailer brake, so ton. yeah. So that that this is our biggest. That's a lot of energy in it is, to try and disperse. This is the biggest headache, really. So um, knowing what we're going to do. So I mean, they're just a wooden block, and they're, they're made from poplar, which is what the wood that we were always told was was the right thing for a brake block. And um, would you set a light to it? Yeah, you can get them, you could get them smoking, I reckon. Yeah, we haven't done. I mean, they are quite good, surprisingly good, really. But again, they're just and so starting to bed in now because. Like if you look at the you know the rims, you can see like where the rivets are. It's all just starting to clean up, and the blocks are bedding it's to the bedding wheels. In, and yes, you've yes, got a block yes. on both sides, so I think I think one on the far side is ever so slightly better than this side, but it'll soon bed in. Because they all, they always said like we're not really know what we're doing with this heavy haulage job. That's why we're having a go to sort of find out because you never really know until you've had a go. We've got the basic idea of it, but these were rated at like a hundred ton on the flat tractor basically so okay. they move 100 ton load on the flat yeah but yes. if you're going anywhere all they did was multiply engines up to give you more pulling and more stopping capabilities so a typical low when you read back the gen of like norman box who was at manchester uh, 50 ton was an average load he would send me one of these on its own if it was fairly level going so like yeah. manchester to liverpool docks 50 ton would be acceptable so we've got 50 ton but we're in the Lake District, so we've got some pre of pretty in steep things. So we're putting two other engines on to assist. One on the back of the trailer for holding back purposes more, and another one on the front for pulling. I, I, I'm sure you would do it with one engine on your own, but I think you'd just be in bottom gear all the time, and we're obviously conscious about hold up traffic on the road and, and taking for absolutely forever to get anywhere. I'd say so, that as job satisfaction. <laughs> yeah, I like that in my tractor yeah. holding traffic up. <laughs> you just made up when there's job a queue. Satisfaction. Job satisfaction. When I can't see the end of the queue, <laughs> yeah. right, I'm, oh, min, min. You know, I try and look as relaxed. I put my feet up on the dash. I look, try and look, look as relaxed. Way. Yeah, I just love it. I love it. So no, I'd, I'd just be... The, People the have no the patience the anymore for anything. You know, I always find it amazing. You take these out on the road, they come around the corner, they blow their horn Shaking. instantly, and like we, we work on the side of the road delivering coal. 
the car comes around the corner, they can't wait a second for you. They've got to be pipping and trying to be past you. Or I don't know why everyone seems to be in such a rush these days, but uh, they won't be this weekend. With the stuff oh, well, they'll, they'll have to a, wait, boy, won't they? Be in a rush, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's going anywhere fast. No. What we need to do is probably take it for a run round here, innit, and just make sure it's all. <laughs> make sure we're all. Out the make, make sure we're like all happy it. with it before we uh, before we set off up there, I suppose. As Guy steams Talisman for the first time, he gets to feel the true power of this colossal engine. As they head down the narrow streets of Shrewsbury, traffic and passers-by get a taste of what's to come when Talisman takes on the challenge at the weekend. Steaming back into the Morris Lubricants factory and with a good practice session under their belt, Alex and the team are ready to take on the challenge and make a lifelong dream come true. Next time on How to Build a Steam Engine. We've been looking forward to doing this and it is the ultimate thing to do with a road engine but just a lot of a massive amount of potential for it to go horrifically wrong. So yeah, I haven't slept for a to be honest. <laughs>